So a pre-assigned URL gives you access to the object identified in the URL, provided that the creator of the pre-signed URL has permission to access the bucket. Okay, this was a lot of information that I told you right now, but there are simple terms to explain this as well. So what happens here is like uh, the pre-signed URLs are useful if you want your users or customers to be able to upload a specific object to your bucket, but you don't require them to have AWS security credentials or permissions. Okay, and when you create a pre-signed URL, you must provide additional information along with it. So when you create a pre-signed URL, you must provide additional information along with it so that it points to the exact resource that you want to deliver. So what are these additional informations then? Your security credentials and then you specify the bucket name, an object key, a HTTP method like a put for uploading objects and expiration date and time. And remember, the pre-signed URLs are valid for the specific duration. Let's suppose I have given an expiration date, right? Or time so for that particular time only the pre-signed url will be valid and you can generate pre-signed urls using like aws sdks clis and aws explorers so the example that i have mentioned here is if you have a video in your bucket and both the bucket and the object are private you still can share the videos to your users by generating a pre-signed url it means that your users don't have to have permissions to access the bucket they can use the pre-signed url to actually watch the video that they want isn't it so we have the API here, the generate pre-signed URL, which takes the arguments like client method, parameters, expires in and HTTP method. So when you talk about the parameters here, there are four and uh, it basically generates the pre-signed URL given by the client and its arguments and it returns the pre-signed URL. So the first thing that you see here is the client method. So client method basically tells you like what type of operation you're going to perform, like are you going to get a particular object or you're going to, are you going to put a particular object so in that sense, like if you're going to fetch some information, like you want to watch the video, then you can send a get request. Uh, similarly, like we have expires in which tells the uh, API, like, so what is the amount of time it is going to be valid for? Let's suppose we have passed 3600, then for that amount of seconds, it will be valid. So the next one is the HTTP method. So basically the HTTP method that we use and it basically converts that into the pre-signed URL and it returns the response. Okay. So this is a basic idea of how the response is. So now let's move on. So we will see this example here. So we have the Video Plaza rent movie portal that we have. And what it does is, so let's suppose you are the user and uh, we have the Video Plaza server here. And basically we have AWS S3 and the bucket. And another thing that we have here is the Lambda function. We'll not discuss it right now, just hold on a minute. So when you directly make a request, for the action.mp4 that we have here, the video file to the, directly to the bucket, it will not be possible for you to get that because you'll get a access denied error response because you're not signed or you are not authorized enough to get the access for that particular file. But the workaround is to generate the pre-signed URLs then. So what happens here is the first step that you do is you connect to the server for Video Plaza where you make the request and internally what happens, we call the Lambda function which generates the pre-signed URL the api that you saw uh, previously so we have a mechanism like we can write a python script or we can write a lambda function basically to generate the pre-signed url using the bucket information that we have from s3 and once the information is received back from the lambda function we are going to send it back to the video plaza server that this is the pre-signed url please send it back as a response to the user and then on the sixth step we actually send it and this is basically how the functionality works. Let, let's suppose you have the user, you send the request back. So let's suppose you are a user, you want a particular action movie to or a particular movie to watch. Then you send the request and let's suppose we have stored it in the S3 bucket. We can generate a pre-signed URL so that you can rent it. So let's suppose I want it to be rented for 3600 seconds. This is a, a CLI, a CLI request. So it will be like AWS S3 pre-sign. And this is the URL for the bucket object that we have action.mp4 and hyphen expires in parameter, which tells us like, so 3600 seconds is the time that will be valid for. And this is the region, region AP South one. So once we have put this request, what will happen is it will generate a, a pre-signed URL. So the URL looks like uh, you have the general uh, HTTPS URL and we have the algorithm that we have set for like um, encryption and the credential that we have and the date timestamp and the expires in time and the signature 
so you don't need any credentials for this to access you can just use this url to access this this is the benefit of using a pre-signed url because you don't need to have any access to the s3 bucket that you are trying to uh, get the data from you can just directly consume the object that you have or the data that you want to so this is a basic example for how the basic uh, pre-signed url mechanism works and how we can help users to access our objects without giving them permissions to directly inherit it from the bucket itself so this is a very important point considering the exam as well like they can ask you like uh, uh, what is the mechanism that you can provide for the users to access a particular object without giving them the hold of the s3 bucket itself so you can tell them that yeah there's a pre-signed url is there and the mechanism we already know and this is how we provide access to the particular users so that they can access the object but they will not have access to the whole bucket okay so i hope this was clear enough and uh, this was easy to understand as well so let's move forward then <laughs>